Hey YouTube fam, it's Daughter of the Most High. Heading into a long weekend, yay. We have some warm weather coming our way in Minnesota. So about upper 90s, 100 degrees. So it's going to be a little toasty here. So, But it'll still be a good weekend. Um, I came across a video that I want to share with you today. And it's so interesting because a couple days ago, my friend John, who is my loyal fan on my channel, um, he and I were chatting and he mentioned a video link that he had sent me a while back about um, with Ray Comfort sharing the gospel. Well, I'd forgotten about it. and But I did watch it and as we were chatting it came back to me and I said, yeah, I do like the way Ray shares the gospel. And that's what this video is about. So um, that was just a couple days ago and then I come across this video today. So that's a meant to be from God. That's what he does. He always brings us multiples. So this video is from um, Walking by the Spirit Always. And that is Terry and um, she makes some very important and interesting and important comments at the end of the video. And so stay tuned for that after uh, the Ray Comfort part of the video. It's only a half hour long in, you know, uh, in length. So anyway, Ray is at the point that I'm going to start sharing with you is Ray is approaching a young man named Justin. And I just find this so interesting. And I want to play it for you and make a few comments. So let's go right into that, okay? Morally and you're released legally. The law would say you've done all you can do. His blood is on his own head. How do you get to heaven? I think by just morally doing the right thing in life. So you think you're a good person? Uh, I believe so, yes. Do you ever read the Bible? I, I do sometimes. What is the gospel? The gospel, off the top of my head right now, I don't remember it. Like, But I have, like, growing up, I've definitely heard it. The gospel is the good news that everlasting life is a free gift and you cannot earn it. I think you're in great danger, Justin. I've got to warn you. I mean, I'm going to take you through the Ten Commandments to show you you can't make it to heaven on your own merit. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Sixth commandment, you shall not kill. Have you ever killed someone? Ever murdered them? No, sir. Have you ever hated somebody? Yes. The Bible says he who hates his brother is a murderer. Seventh commandment, you shall not commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? No, sir. Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery already with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. How many lies have you told in your life? Probably too many to count. And what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. What are you? Liar. Now, do you still think you're a good person? I'd still say yes. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small in your whole life, irrespective of its value? Yes. What do you call someone who steals? Thief. So what are you? Thief. No, you're not. You're a lying thief. Okay. Still think you're a good person? It's starting to make me question that. Have you ever used God's name in vain? That's the third commandment. Yes, sir. You love your mum? Yeah. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? No. Why not? Um... I'm not too sure. Well, you love her and respect her. She's your mother. Uh, and you never do that. But you've taken the name of God, the holy name of God, the one that gave you a mother and gave you life, and used it as a cuss word to express disgust. Justin, that's called blasphemy. So serious in the Old Testament, it's punishable by death. So here's a quick summation. You've told me, and I'm not judging you, that you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous. You had sex before marriage. Yes. Fornicating, adulterer at heart, who's also a murderer at heart, who's also self-righteous, which is a sin, and saying you're a good person when you're obviously not, you're like the rest of us. So here's the big question, this is where we're going. If God judges you by those ten commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty on judgment day. Right, guilty. Heaven or hell? Just based on this, maybe hell? Definitely hell. Do you know... It's interesting, first of all, that Justin... There's a lot of people wouldn't, that wouldn't tolerate this. Justin's a champ right there. They would have walked away. They would have been mad and walked away because people don't like to hear that they're... I think people know they're sinners, but again, they don't know the magnitude of, you know, of their sin. We're, we're, we really essentially are blind to it, and that includes believers too. Not all believers, but a lot of believers are blind to how much sin they have in their life. Um, let's go back to, to Justin. He's, he's start the light's starting to come on for him. So he, he's, he's, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Ever heard that Bible verse? I have not. 
Yeah, the wages of sin is death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a criminal who thinks he's a good person, but he's committed multiple murders. The judge says, I'm going to show you how serious your crime is. I'm giving you the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what you've earned. This is what's due to you. And Justin, sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. You're on death row. Your death will be evidence to you. But God is deadly serious about sin. So you're drinking iniquity or sin. God is deadly serious about sin. Oh, it breaks my heart how lukewarm at best our churches are and how they hardly address sin. And that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest issue. That's the biggest thing. We need to get the sin out of our lives. We are saved by grace and that grace we are given grace to get out of sin. We are given mercy to get out of sin, not to stay in sin. So we need to understand that. So I like, I'm I'm somebody that's drawn to um, that stronger word. I always am. Um, I'm not a gummy bear Jesus person. I'm not the lukewarm churches. I'm not any of that. And a lot of Christians are. I like a strong word and I want it to cut through me. And, you know, to to yank the slack out of my you know thinking my ways anything that's wrong in my life let's get rid of it i'm not interested in being coddled and babied and the gummy bear jesus gospel no let's hit it you know let's let's get this and i i so appreciate god's mercy i'm just saying i'm somebody that really appreciates the fire and brimstone sermons. I like a strong word because I benefit from it. I don't care if it hurts my feelings. I don't care if it, you know, rattles me a bit. It's just some, it's just one of the ways that I am. And I would love to see more people really welcome a strong word. Why? Because we need it. We're sinful beings. We're saturated in a sinful culture. Even as believers, we, you know, I said it. All right, let's go back to Justin. Like water, that's what the Bible says. And with it is death. The wages of sin is death. And that's what I've got to warn you about. Let's say you're a doctor, and in front of you is a patient who looks incredibly well. He's got a great physique, he works out every day, and he feels fit and healthy. But you know differently. You've seen the x-rays, and he's dying. He's got two weeks to live. There's a poison seeping through his system. You have a cure in your pocket. What do you do? Show him the x-rays or give him the cure? I'd give him the cure. No, he's not going to want the cure because he thinks he's well. He's fit and healthy. He's going to say, Doc, what do you give me this cure for? I'm not diseased. You crazy? Get this out of my face. If the doctor's a good doctor, he's going to show him the x-rays, show him the poison seeping through his system, make him fearful, make him tremble to a point where he says, Doctor, I can see this is deadly serious. What? This is such a good analogy. Do you know how many people look fit and healthy? And especially since the current agenda and the issue that it creates in our body. So these people that are athletes and fit and healthy and young and they're dropping dead from, you know, we know the deal. So that analogy is perfect. Um, we can think we're okay. There it is again. We can think we're okay and we're not. We, can, we have to stop trusting this guy here. We need to get in the presence of the Holy Spirit so that we can actually see and experience, even on some level, our sin. I remember one time, and I've shared this before on my channel, that I was at a, a Bible study many years ago, probably mm, 10, 11 years ago, and the Spirit of God fell on me so strongly, and He showed me my sin. And he showed me how wrong I was. And I was thinking I was doing pretty good. You know, I'm working in ministry, you know, at a faith-based treatment center. And I was actually dating a Christian guy that was actually, a, I thought, a strong Christian. And I thought I was good. And in that, in that Bible study, I mean, I just thank God for this stuff. Here it is again. And he just poured out his Holy Spirit on me. And there I am. And from inside of myself, I was saying, not here, not here, in here, because the Holy Spirit was so strong in me, I was saying from deep within myself, Lord, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. I was in his presence, in my spirit at this Bible study, and I was saying, 
Lord, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. And do you know in my natural mind, apart from the, the Holy Spirit falling on me, so intent, like like oil pouring over me, and I thought I thought I was doing good. I'm in ministry, you know, I'm in ministry. I minister to clients all the time that are addicts and alcoholics, killing themselves, and I am bringing light and, you know, the light of the Lord into their life. So I felt like I was doing so well, and I wasn't. I wasn't. There it is. It, it got, it's it's so alarming, and it's alarming to me even just talking about it. How we can think we're doing pretty good, and we're not doing pretty good at all. Oh Lord, we need more of the Holy Spirit in our life. We do, because we we trust this guy too much, and I've done it too. That's what I'm saying. All right, back to Justin. What should I do? And then he's ready for the cure. Now he's going to appreciate it and appropriate it. Can you understand that? Yes, sir. And Justin, because I love you, I've showed you the x-rays today to show you how serious sin is so you'll be fearful and say, whoa, what should I do? This is deadly serious. I don't want to end up in hell. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And that brings us to the good news of the gospel. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? Yes. Yeah. Most people have, but they don't understand this. And Justin, if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Gee. Okay, I'm going to stop there. because And he says to Ray, Ray walks him through a little bit more, and then he said, are you going to, you know, are you going to receive Christ today? And he said, yeah, right after I leave here. And Ray, so good. I mean, this is what we need. How about right now? That's what Ray says. How about right now? Let's pray. I love stuff like that. And that's what we need. We need that bold word. We need that um, that strong um, like conviction and um, direction from someone that is in faith and sharing the gospel. Hey, how about right now? How about right now? So Justin, Justin's a champ. I hope he's a, you know became a brother in Christ through this. Um, he seems like a good guy in a lot of ways and able to receive and and uh, receive a strong word. And he's still standing there. You'll see it in the video when you watch the link. So um, I'm hoping he stayed with it. Um, another thing I want to share just real quick. I only have about two minutes left. Ray says a couple minutes back that the wages of sin are death. And that's true. That's what the Bible says. But please understand that as as a person that is born into a sinful world and born into a sinful being with, you know, with the sinful being that we're on our way to hell, not as a child. Now, God, there's the age of accountability, but we're on our way to hell, like from that age of accountability on. Please understand that. And then what God did is he intervened by sending Jesus. He intervened. We're already on our way to hell. It's not like we're hanging in the balance and we're in a good spot and then you know we fall off the cliff if if we die. I don't feel like I'm saying that real clearly, but just to understand that, you know, I was on my way to hell when I got saved at age 20 and I didn't realize that. I didn't know that. I didn't understand that about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I didn't know the gospel of Jesus Christ. So please understand that, that we're on our way and then that God sent an intervention when he sent his son, when he sent his word to show us what's going on and sent his Holy Spirit. That is, we're already on our way. It's God made a way. Okay, so anyway, fam. So much information here. So much good information. Watch the whole link. Listen to Terry's. She shares so many good verses about adulterous remarriage. Please listen to the end, and I will see you soon, fam.